Alright guys, today we're going to do some systems. Systems of linear in equations and inequalities. Remember they're linear, which means no exponents today. Just straight up linear equations and inequalities. Okay, we're going to solve them by two or three different methods. The first one is solved by graphing. Um, so what we got to do, we're going to actually graph these on our calculator. Let them graph them until the answer for us. But to graph them on the calculator, we must get y isolated. So on this first one right here, what I'm going to do first is take the 4x over. That will leave me negative y equals 18 minus 4x. And then, of course, because it's a negative y, I'm going to divide the whole thing by negative 1 and go 18 minus 4x over negative 1. Or you could just change the signs on the 18 and the 4x. I'm going to do the same thing for the second one. Move the 3x over. Negative 4y equals 20 minus 3x. Divide by negative 4. So I'm looking at this. 20 minus 3x over negative 4. So I'm going to punch this and this in the calculator and graph it to see where the solution is. Now remember, these are both lines. Our solution is going to be where the two lines intersect each other. That's, that's the one point where this solves both equations. Now I went ahead and punched them both in. So you can see right there, y1 is my first equation, y2 is my second one. So I'm going to graph those two. And there's, there's both lines. Now each point on each line is a solution to that equation. So the point where they intersect is actually a solution to both equations. So I'm going to find the intersection point. And the steps you go is you go to second calc up on the top row. And I'm looking for the intersection, which is number five. It's going to say first curve, which means your cursor should be somewhere on your first curve. It is. It's at 0, negative 18, way down at the bottom somewhere. Hit enter again. Second curve, there it is. I can see it now. It's on the second one. It calls everything a curve, even if it's a line. Hit enter again. It says, do you want the calculator to tell you the answer? Yes, you do. And there it is. It's 4, negative 2. So the solution to this system right here is 4, negative 2. If I were to plug that point in the first equation, it would work. Or the second equation, it would work. It's the one solution to both. The second method we're going to use is substitution. Now you did this in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 probably. Um, to use substitution, you need to get one variable isolated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this y because it already has just a positive 1 in the front. I'm going to move that to the other side. and It's going to be 22 minus 2x. Now the substitution comes in in the fact that I'm going to take this 22 minus 2x. I'm going to substitute it for y in the other equation. So it's going to look like this, 3x minus 22. Notice I'm using parentheses because that minus sign is for the whole y, which means it's for the whole 22 minus x. So distribute the minus sign. That's minus 22 plus 2x equals 8. I'm going to have 5x over here. I'm going to go ahead and move the 22 over. Gives me 30. Divide both sides by 5. Get a 6. Now that's my x coordinate of my answer. To find the y coordinate, I'm going to take it and plug it in right there where we started. 2 times 6 is 12. 22 minus 12 is 10. So my solution should be 610. That should work in both equations. I'm, I'm checking it real quick in my head. Looks good. It does for sure. Okay. My favorite method is probably this one is elimination. Um, I'm going to make a variable go away. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by positive 2. Because what that's going to do is it's going to give me a 4y right above the negative 4y, which means I can cancel those in just a second. So I don't know what's happening right there with that bar. Okay. So. Um, Multiply the whole top equation by 2. 2x plus 4y equals 680. And my bottom equation, 3x minus 4y equals 360. All right. And when I add those equations together, my 4y's disappear. That's 13x. Over here, it's going to be 9. It's going to be 1,040, I think. So let's see here. I think that's going to be 80. So I'm going to take that 80 right there and plug it back in. One of my original two equations, I'm going to plug it right here. 5 times 80 is 400. And 400 plus negative 60 would be 340. So that means y has to be negative 30. So my answer is going to be 80 and negative 30. I'm going to plug it in real quick the second one to make sure. 240 and 120. Yes, that, that answer is perfect. You, and the way I'm doing that, I'm just, I'm just plugging it in the equation to make sure it works. And it does. All right, now this one, when you get to three variables, I thought about making you, you know, do the whole thing. That would take you about two-thirds of a piece of paper to do that. So most of you already know about the RF button, and I do not want you to use the RF button on the two variables. But on the three variables, I'm going to go ahead and let you do it. It's just kind of ridiculous to do all that work. So in case you forgot, here we go. Go to Matrix on your calculator. Go to Edit. Hit Enter. And because we have three equations, and four columns, I'm going to type in 3 by 4. 
it's rows by columns. Then I'm just punching the coefficients one, one, one. You need to hit enter after every number. Five, negative one, one, negative two, negative five, and three, negative two, one, and negative three. Now here's the weird step, and I hope you remember this, but to make, you got to save that matrix, and the way to save a matrix on your calculator is to actually quit. So I'm going to go second, quit, and that saved my matrix for me. Then to make it uh, do the RF, go to second matrix, go to math, and I usually scroll up because it's a little bit quicker to get there. RF is B. You, you could do alpha B, probably better. And now you need to tell it which uh, matrix you want it to RF. We use matrix A, so I'm going to go back to matrix A. There's my three by four. Hit number one, hit enter. <laughs> and the numbers in your last column are your solutions. That's your, the first one is your x, that's your y, that's your z. So my solution would be negative 1, 2, and 4. Alright, so if, on the three variables I'm going to go ahead and let you use the calculator. On the two variables I want you to go ahead today and do exactly what it says to do. Alright, four words. You need to make sure you get these down. Consistent means it has at least one solution because sometimes systems have infinite solutions. Inconsistent means it has no solution. This would be like consistent is the first one we did. We graphed it and we got something like this. So the solution was right there. So it had a solution. Inconsistent, the graph would look like this. It would be parallel lines, which means they would never intersect. Independent means exactly one solution. So this one right here, that picture, is both consistent and independent. Dependent means it has infinite solutions. That graph would be, look strange. Like you would see a graph that looked like that. If you punch it in your calculator, that's what you would see when you graphed a system. You'd be waiting and waiting to see the other line. But what happened is both lines are the same line, and so you're only going to see one. And I'll put this at the bottom. I said to run by the slopes. Instead of doing all the graphing work and trying to solve them, we can figure it out just by checking the slopes, which one's which. But make sure you get those words down on what means what. All right, so this first one right here, I'm going to check slope. These are standard forms. Uh, the slope on this one, you do negative A over B, that'd be positive 2. This one, you do negative A over B, that'd be positive 2. So slopes are the same because the slopes are the same that means they're either parallel or they're the same line so I gotta figure out which one's which and the way you can tell if they're the same line is the equations are multiples of each other like 2 times 3 is 6 negative 1 times negative times 3 is negative 3 7 times 3 is 21 you can reduce one to get the other or the ratios are all the same this time they are that's the exact same line so I'm gonna put consistent because it does have a solution and I'm gonna put dependent because it has infinite. If it's the same line, it has infinite solution, so it's consistent and dependent. The second one, the slope on that one is it's 2. It's 2x minus y again. The slope on this one is also 2, but look what happens this time. The ratios. 2 6 is 1 3rd. That's 1 3rd. This side's 1 4th, though. So this side right here messed up the ratios. Or I, I, can't, I can multiply this side by 3 to get that side, but not this side. So it messed it up. So that means there's no solution at all which means it is inconsistent. And if you write inconsistent, that's all you write. So today, if you get a problem that, that has no solution, instead of writing no solution, we're going to write inconsistent. All right, the last thing today are the inequalities. We get, another way to do inequality, uh, inequalities, I just said inequality, inequalities. The only way to do systems of inequalities is to graph and shade. So that's what I'm going to do. Both of these are in slope-intercept form. I'm going to take the first one. Y is greater than 3x plus 1. 1 is your y-intercept. 3 is your slope. So I'm going to start at the 1 and rise 3 and run 1. And I'm going to connect those with a broken line. It's broken because there is no equals in that one. Now I need to figure out where I'm going to shade. So I'm going to plug in 0, 0. It would be 0 is greater than 0 plus 1. Ask yourself, is 0 greater than 1? It is not. So that means I would shade on this side. I'm not going to shade it yet because it would cover up a lot of my graph. But you're going to, well, I'm going to shade in a minute on that side of the line. Now I'm going to do the other one. I'll change colors real quick. I think I just changed. Let's go red. All right, so the y-intercept on this one is negative 2. And the slope on that one is 1. So I'm going to rise 1, run 1. And this one is solid. So I'm going to draw a solid line right through those two. Plug in 0, 0 to see where to shade. I would get 0 is less than 0 minus 2. Ask yourself, is that true? Is 0 less than negative 2? It is not. So I'm going to shade on this side of the red line. So I'm looking below the red and to the left of the purple 
to figure out where I would, what would they have in common? Where's the part of the graph they would share if I shade it? And the answer is this section right down here. So that shaded region right down there would be the answer to that system. All right, I'm going to show you one more of those. Um, these are something weird is happening this time because if you notice right off the top, both slopes are the same. The first one uh, has the y-intercept of negative 8, and the slope is 3. 1, 2, 3, over 1. I don't know why I don't use this tool over here. Um, so I'm going to graph that one. Now, one mistake I just made, I just noticed that when I was drawing this, is the fact that that one should be broken. I like how I can use my race right here just kind of break it up a little bit. Alright, so there's the first one. Uh, figure out where to shade. So I'm going to go to 0, 0. 0 is less than 0 minus 8. That is not true. 0 is not less than negative 8. So I'm going to shade on this side of that line. I'm going to change colors. Do the second one. Y-intercept is 4. Slope is 3. Uh, should be parallel, so I'm going to draw that one again. Uh, let's see here. Kind of like that. Kind of like that. Only problem is that one should be broken also, so I'll take my eraser again. Break it up a little bit. Alright, now, let's plug in 0, 0, see if that one works. Plug in 0 is greater than 0 plus 4. Is 0 greater than 4? No, it's not, so it's shade this way. So here's the issue. On my blue line, I'm going to be shading this direction. On my red line, I'm shading this direction. Which means, what do they have in common? The answer is nothing. So sometimes inequalities can also be inconsistent. All right, there is no solution whatsoever. So we're going to say those are inconsistent as well. And that's the lesson. Just systems, all linear. Going to graph some on the calculator. Going to use some RF on the three variables. Don't forget substitution, elimination. And the main thing is, is learning those words. Consistent, inconsistent, dependent, independent, and you have it made. I will see you in class tomorrow. We'll work on it.